Hello, hello, and welcome to another edition of Things We Said Today. This is a weekly podcast that concerns what's going on in the world of the Beatles as far as Beatle news is concerned. I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the show, and most people know me for a Beatles program that is syndicated right now uh, called Every Little Thing, and I'm being joined by my co-host, Mr. Beatles Examiner himself, Steve Marinucci. Hi, everybody. Hi, Ken. On today's program, we're going to address something that Paul McCartney said, which is in a brand new documentary on Jeff Lynne that I had a chance to watch when it aired on VH1 Classic not long ago. And the documentary is called Mr. Blue Sky. And in this documentary, Paul actually says that he wants to go back in the studio with Jeff Lynne and work on another one of the songs that was submitted for the Beatles Anthology Project that the Beatles didn't get to finish, called Now and Then. And what I thought we'd do is just talk about that, as far as whether or not we feel this is something that Paul should do. So, Steve, I'd like to know what your opinion is on this well, particular issue. Let's get a little history on this. This is not the first time this has come up. That's right. It came up in 2009. Um, it came, it's, it's, in fact, I think it's actually come up even more than once that Paul has mentioned this and people have gotten all excited about, about this. And it obviously came up during the making of the anthology and for whatever reason it was rejected. And there's a version... The, the demo of, the, of Now and Then that's floating around is not the greatest quality, and there obviously was some work that had to be done on it. Yeah, there's actually a loud buzz that you can mm -hmm. hear throughout it. It's just John on a piano with this buzz sound, which I don't know if with today's technology you can remove, but you can do wonders with our technology these days or cover it up somehow. Yeah, they probably could have done um, a lot to it, but... They had the chance to do it during the anthology. They tried it. As I recall, the word was back then that the problem with the demo was so bad that they couldn't do it. And actually, and, if, you, if you follow what Paul said in this documentary, George Harrison didn't like the song. Right. And, and he called, it, other, he called yeah, it rubbish. Right. That was the other reason, too, that George didn't particularly like it. I can't see any reason. Uh, Paul does this. Um, he'll bring up Things like this, he'll be, I mean, at the carnival, the whole carnival light thing that everybody got excited about that he, that they thought he was going to release, which I really didn't believe for a minute that he would actually be serious about releasing because it's such an off the wall track. Hmm. Um, he's not going to release this. If George didn't like it, um, Olivia's not going to go, not going to turn around and say, yeah, go ahead. Um, because she's real firm on his, you know, on his thinking on what he on what he wanted to do. So I really can't see. I think this is just kind of a, you know, a throw it out to the out there and see what the reaction would be or something. But I there's I don't really think he'll he'll put this out. I mean, I would kind of like this kind of, but Free as a Bird was so good. And so is real love. Mm. You know, I would hate to see um, a third track come out that wasn't up to the standards of those other two. Okay, I mean, you know, that's a good point. Yeah. What do you um, What do you think? Well, the whole thing with me is, and first of all, whether or not this is even relevant, and maybe some of the fans who are listening to this show who are Jeff Lynn fans may even know this, but we don't even know when this interview with Paul took place. That's in the documentary. This could right. be a few years ago anyway. Mm -hmm. But the whole issue with me is something that Paul has said on numerous occasions, which is that the Beatles were the ultimate democracy and that nothing went out as the Beatles unless the four of them approved it. In Paul's own words, he even said, a day in the life wouldn't have gone out unless Ringo approved it. If Ringo didn't like it, it wouldn't have gone out. He's actually said that. So, and I happen to believe that. I really think that nothing went out as the Beatles without them all approving it. Not that they had a meeting with every song and they, and they took a vote, but if the Beatles didn't want something out, 
it wouldn't have gone out, which is why Cold Turkey, which Paul didn't want the Beatles to record, went out as a John Lennon song, as a solo and, John song. But and Neil, it, Asp- Neil Aspinall confirmed that in the uh, Love movie. Say, he, I mean, he said it straight out, that unless the four principles agree, nothing goes. Right. So I can't see any, any reason that he's just kind of throwing it out. And, and You think he's doing this just for PR? Well, I don't, you know, it's hard to say. I was uh, very much aware of, of, you know, public reaction. I mean, he's, you know, he's got this very involved, you know, he's got a full message board. I mean, his, his website is is um, a lot more active, really, than the others. And um, so I don't know what why he bothered to bring this up now. Um, he knows that, you know, the fans are very, I, I hate to, I don't mean to use the word volatile, but this thing that comes to mind is that anything like this, you know, gets quite a reaction. Mm -hmm. And people tend to go off on things like this, as they did when he mentioned it. All of a sudden there was this big blow up. Oh, we're going to hear it now and then again. And I really, I I can't see it happening. Now, just to expand on this topic, you could go back to Free as a Bird and Real Love and even question whether or not John would have wanted that. But the thing is that we know since John's passing and George is passing that Yoko and Olivia, they have their say. They take a vote. They represent their husbands, as they should. You would think nobody would know them better than their wives. But if you follow what happened with those, uh, those songs, Free as a Bird and Real Love, they really happened because Paul asked Yoko for songs to be put into the Beatles anthology that they could work on. And it wasn't was as though Yoko just, just said, hey, Paul, would you like to work on these songs? It's because Paul asked for it. So, you know, Yoko has even said she didn't want to look like the bad guy. So you don't even know if John would have approved those songs anyway for the other Beatles to work on them. Well, when I talked to Yoko back, my, the first time I talked to her, I mean, I thanked her point blank for giving those songs over. I mean, she could have. I think she could have turned them down. She could have said no, if she hmm. if she wanted to, and she didn't. And I, I think she she knew what what was at stake, and she knew what they were doing. Um, so don't get me wrong. I'm very grateful that those two songs were recorded. I really oh, I am. am too. And I I'm extremely... grateful to Yoko for that too. But if you follow this whole principle that it should be all four of them. And obviously, with John passing away and George passing away, you can't have that, and you have to trust the wives. But right. in the case of those two John Lennon songs, it was done. Yoko said she didn't want to look like the bad guy. So maybe, you know, it wasn't in John's best interest for those two songs to be given to the other Beatles. There was, uh, and there's another aspect to those songs that rarely gets discussed, and that's closure. It was closure for... You know it was closure for them. It was closure for the Beatles. Definitely, it had to have been. It was closure for the fans. I mean, I don't. I, I mean, how many fans? I mean, I, I'll, I'll tell you. I, I'm going to be. I'm going to be honest. I was sitting there watching that that night when I heard "Free as a Bird." My eyes started watering. It was. It was very emotional. And it had I got to be, chills. I, I got chills. I mean, I, 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 it had to be emotional for everybody. Mm. For them. For us, and I think that closure aspect again doesn't really get mentioned enough. It really was. It really was closure for everybody because there was this, there was this real void because of of you know the loss of John. That although the song itself you know obviously didn't change that, it sure kind of smoothed it over if you know what I mean. And maybe that's the wrong term, but it really did. I think help with closure for uh, for a lot of fans. I really think that that a masterful job was done on those two songs with Jeff Lynne, and sometimes oh, he gets was. criticized, especially with "Real Love," with uh, John's voice being kind of high, mm-hmm. you know, in the, in those in that particular recording. But um, and again, I don't want anyone to misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm very grateful that those two songs and those two recordings exist, and I think Jeff Lynne did a great job on it. But if you go back to this principle as to whether or not the Beatles are the ultimate democracy. And in this particular case with Now and Then, you know George didn't like the song. 
So then if Olivia is representing George, you would think that, you know, she wouldn't give it the seal of approval. So if, if it's on record that George didn't like it, then it's my personal opinion that Paul shouldn't do this. And also, too, it's well known that George was not in favor of Let It Be coming out. See, that's that another thing I wanted to bring up, because it's mm-hmm. that's been rumored, but has it ever been substantiated? I believe, actually, there has been some, I, I, either Paul or Olivia, I think some somebody has, somebody has linked it to him that they didn't like it. And um, although I think the chance of that coming out is probably, you know, I think that will happen. Um, we always come back to let it be on this show. <laughs> I know. We've done that several times now, haven't we? Yeah. But yeah, I think, I think you know, that's such a major portion of their, you know, of their history that, you know, I don't think they can kind of cut that out. And they know that. Well, it's it's my personal opinion that when you're dealing with something that has been released before, there's no reason for it not to be re-released in the case of Let It Be or Live at the Hollywood Bowl, for that matter. If it's been out there before, there's no reason why it shouldn't come out again. And that's my own personal opinion. So right. if it is true what I've heard about George, that he felt the, the movie was too depressing, Let It Be, and he didn't want it out, and yet then you would say... If it does come out, then you're not honoring George's wishes. Right. But, you know, it, like I said, I believe it should come out only because it was out previously. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, that's another, re- you know, that's another reason why the odds are very good. To but then on. why would Paul bring this up at all? And like, like we just said, it could just be a PR move if he knew that George didn't like it. So isn't that being contradictory when he says the Beatles were a democracy? That's true. I mean, look at the whole thing again with Carnival of Light. I mean, he, you know, he brought that up too, and that caused a huge reaction, and everybody got really hopeful. And and he said he's he's even said it uh, again. I mean, he he said it more than once about that, and I really can't see that coming out. And I personally really don't want to hear that. Uh, I, I know. Some people do. I think I think you and I had a discussion at one time, and you said you wanted to hear it, but I really don't. I mean, it's because it's not a Beatles song. It's not anything even close to a Beatles song. Well, see, there is there's a whole other show, <laughs> because That's that true. was that was Paul's creation, and for people that don't know, this is uh, an instrumental experimental track that went on for something like 27 minutes, mm-hmm. and I'm sure that a lot of people when they hear it would kind of be bored with it but then at the same time you know you've got john who released all the the avant-garde stuff with yoko early on and uh george harrison doing his uh electronic sound album which is all instrumental stuff right on a moog uh, moog synthesizer um you've got all that out there anyway and it's always debatable as to what is a beatles song if if uh paul's the only one involved well he's the only one involved with yesterday but I mean, how how memorable are those uh, electronic, uh, you know, those uh, the two avant-garde things you mentioned, the the Lennon and the Harrison? Well, to me, it's it's not memorable, but you no. never know. Some people out there may enjoy that. I actually had a request on my radio show to do an all experimental show and to play the early John and Yoko stuff. And to play stuff from Wonderwall music and electronic sound and some of Paul's stuff, the fireman, the, his ambient music as the fireman, that kind of stuff. Some people get a, you know, a big kick out of that. And that's a side of the Beatles that a lot of people aren't even aware of, this very experimental side of them. True. So, you know, it, it will, nothing that comes out on the Beatles can ever tarnish their reputation as far as I'm concerned. You know, if, if you think Carnival of Light shouldn't come out, then should What's the New Mary Jane have come out? No, I think actually that's very creative. You do? I think that, oh, yes, I do. I remember hearing that, you know, before, you know I remember hearing the Blue Legs, and I, I thought that was very, it may not have started out creative, but they did a, it, it, was, a, a, it was a fine, it was a nice record. I, I enjoy listening to A nice to that. record? Well, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the the lyrics, what a shame Mary Jane had a pain at the party. I mean, that's, 
that's funny. I mean, that's typical Lenin, you know, humor, and and it's very, you know, it's very Lenin, and I I, I like that. I enjoyed that. Okay. Well, yeah, everyone has a different opinion. True. You know, I I listen to it as more of a, a novelty record, in a way. I, I couldn't really listen to that with repetition. You know, that's just my own personal taste. But right. you know, that's that's the whole reason why we have conversations like this. Everybody has their own opinion. You know, my and, name is the same kind of. It's the same in the same vein. Hmm. And, I think that song is is much more. Uh, Easy to digest. Than Mary Jane. Yeah. Okay. I think they're I think they're pretty close. Hmm. Um, maybe uh, you know my name because it's got you know all of them on there and you can hear Paul very clearly and you know you can hear John very clearly and um, that's not the case obviously with, with uh, Mary Jane. But um, you know my name was a fun record to me. True. And yeah, it could be considered novelty esque. I just found what's the new Mary Jane to be extremely repetitious. It's mm-hmm. just my own per- my own personal opinion. I'm not going to knock anyone that likes the song. That's okay. just me. But you know, if, if you're going to argue that Carnival of Light shouldn't have come out, then you could probably make the argument that you know some people probably think what's the new Mary Jane is not worthy of release. And that's probably why it got they you know they stuck it on the anthology. You know. And, um, it's a lot or, shorter, so it's a lot easier to release something like that. Right. The bootleg versions are longer. And, mm. um, so, I mean, and there's more than one of those. I mean, and those, those have been floating around for, you know, for a long time. So it wasn't like, uh, they hadn't been out there before. So getting back to now and then, we're both mm-hmm. in agreement that it shouldn't be redone. And actually, do we even know this? Are there tracks of, Paul, George, and Ringo working on that? So that if Paul was to rework this song, are there George tracks? Do we have any guitar work from George to represent George on this recording? There, I believe there have been fake record, you know, fake uh, versions. I don't think there's... I've heard stuff on the internet, especially on YouTube, where, oh, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's, it's other musicians adding a backing track. You know, so it sounds like this is what the Beatles would have sounded like had they have done it. But I don't know for sure if there are actually tracks from Paul, mm-hmm. George, and Ringo. Because if Paul was to go about doing this, it would kind of be wrong for George not to be on the record. Right. Right. So, the, the, I mean, that's another reason, too. I mean, you're, you know, who's going to do the guitar work on, on the thing? Or would, would they just use the versions that they've already played with, you know? Nobody wants, I don't think there's anybody out there that wants to hear the song that would want not to have George on the song. Mm. And you know what's another issue, and maybe we'll tackle this in another show, but as a big fan of the radio series, The Lost Lennon Tapes, there's a lot of songs that John wrote or was working on during that that five-year hiatus that he didn't finish that I think were far better than now and then. And I kind of wish that Yoko had given some other songs to Paul, George, and Ringo at that time. Yeah. It just so happens that she gave Free as a Bird and, and Real Love, and they worked out fine. But there's some other songs that I found were pretty interesting that had John lived and he had really continued working on, could have been something. So, and the interesting thing, especially with, with Free as a Bird, is that they added that extra section in there the whatever happened to which John was working on, but they kind of perfected it. But then, if you if you start doing a whole bunch of songs, you're going to get the criticism that the Beatles were, you know, dredging up things that, or I should say, the Three Beatles were dredging up things that didn't need to be dredged up. I, I know I have one friend who may or may not be listening to the show that um, was very critical of Free as a Bird and, and Real Love. Hmm. He did not like the concept at all uh, of them uh, taking a, you know, a demo of John and, and recording over it and making a finished recording out of that. Right. And I'm sure there are people that probably, I don't think a lot of Beatles fans feel that way, but I think there are people out there who probably heard that heard those songs and, and thought that way. Hmm. And I think I would have a problem with doing a, like a whole album of that. I'm, 
I don't think that would have been a good thing to do. Even with George Wise, I don't think that would have been a good thing to do. Right. I'm just now, saying are, that, that there are a lot of potentially really good songs there in the can. Right. And, and a lot of that Yoko hasn't even released still. I mean, some of it turned up on the anthology box, the John anthology box. But, right. um, you know, there's still a lot of stuff out there that, that people haven't heard unless they were a fan of the radio show or collect the bootlegs. So it wouldn't have bothered me. I think it's more special when you do one at a time instead of doing a whole album. But since George has passed away, too, it's kind of a moot point. So, right. you know, what are you going to do? Just have Paul and Ringo back up John songs and you don't, you don't have anything representing George? So we seem to be in agreement that Paul probably shouldn't do this. Right. One of these days we're going to really disagree on something on this show, and I don't know when that's going to happen, but I hope it's soon. <laughs> well, I think, we, I think we came pretty close there because, yeah, I mean, it's just, I think it's just a silly idea. It really is. Anyway. But in a way, I could see Paul thinking to himself, it's a, good, it's a good way to get John out there in the public eye, get one of his songs out there, get some airplay, keep his name out there. And keep the Beatles' name out there. So, you know, I can I can definitely see Paul thinking that way. Well, they I mean they've done that. The rock band thing kept their name out there. I actually wish that they had put out soundtracks for those. I know the Bootleggers did it, but I wish they had done soundtracks for that game um, and released those mixes or some of them anyway. Hmm. Because with the talking at the front and the back, I mean, all that stuff was in the game. And, you know, the Bootleggers did a job putting out CDs and putting out DVDs for that stuff. Right. And it's too bad they didn't do some of that, at least some of it. But, oh well. What can I say? So anyway, uh, we should let everybody know that, first of all, we have a brand new email address that people can write to us. And why don't you tell the folks what that is? It's things we said today radio show at gmail dot com. And not only that, we have our own Facebook page for things we said today. Each of us has our own individual Facebook page, and yours right. is mine is uh, under my name, Steve Marinucci. And uh, also, I have one under Ken Michaels. And my profile picture is with me. And my wife with Todd Rundgren and his wife, if you want to look that up. And if people are curious, they can always go to my website, which is KenMichaelsRadio.com. And on there, you will find all kinds of interesting interviews, audio interviews with people connected to the Beatles, and lots of trivia and contests and prizes given away every single week. And uh, some of the prizes, by the way, are ones that we're discussing here on the show. You know, like the Magical Mystery Tour DVD, for example. So if you can, check that out, KenMichaelsRadio.com. And by the way, um, we had a suggestion from one of our listeners to possibly have a theme song to open and close with. So what we'd like to do is encourage any of you who are musicians, if you'd like to, to submit an instrumental music bed that we can use. And it has to be an original song, not your cover of a Beatles song. And we will mention the name of the song, and your name as a credit at the end. Steve? So there you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, that, that'd be a lot of fun. And I don't know if we're going to, if we're going to, beyond that, I mean, we're not going to do, do prizes or anything like that, but that would be your prize, your little bit of possible fame. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, possible fame? That's you true. would be instantly famous. Instantly famous. Okay. That's right. Instant karma, baby. There you go. And, uh, and and we do ask, at least I think you're in agreement with me, Steve, that it should be a music bed that's sort of Beatlesque. Right. You know, it could be a particular period of the Beatles. It could be a psychedelic uh, kind of feel to it. It could be something solo, something with a George Harrison sly guitar sound, if you want. If you'd like to, please submit it to us. And uh, you could do so at our email address, which is what again, Steve? Things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. And this is uh, Beatles Examiner Steve Marinucci saying thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Yes, and for things we said today, this is Ken Michaels also thanking you for listening. And as Steve said, we'll see you next time.